Today we are going fishing. I will show you how to make a beautiful and elegant underwater fish scene by combining a hairdryer, some paint, air drying clay and plenty of creativity. These little fishes are ready to swim right off the canvas so let me show you how you can make this piece too. Now forgive me, my voice is a bit hoarse, but it's still me. I don't think I can survive any longer without making something blue because the last few weeks was all different colors. It's perfect because I was asked for my take on those golden fish swimming in the ocean style artwork. So we're going to attempt something similar today with some minimalistic blues. These are the colors that I'm going to use. Perhaps a little bit of white, but not on its own, but in my mixes. So we've got pearl sea green, pearl turquoise, Prussian blue. As I said, I combined all these colors. However, I think I added a little bit of phthalo green as well. Now, what's in the mix? Oh, this one is not finished, so you see how thick it is. At the moment, this one, we've got one part of paint. It's really gloopy. The two parts of Floetrol. And I use the British Floetrol, which is called Overdraw. It's much thicker than the American version or the Australian version. Therefore, I'm going to use some water and I make it more runny. This was a metallic paint, so it kind of feels thicker anyway. It's just pure water here. Okay, now it runs off the stick, but it's still too thick for my liking. See, a little build up now. And I'm going to check that all of them are the same consistency. It's really important. We've got five 50 by 20 lightweight canvas. I'm going to put it higher as it's going to be messy. Definitely for my standards, too messy, but it's fun. It's fun. And now I'm thinking about the composition. When I was making my um, golden tree with flying birds, I was moving the canvas and I made some strips of color on the background. I just wonder, maybe? Let's just pour the background first and then I might add something on top. If I think I wanted the blue, dark blue somewhere here. I will add more, but I'm planning at the moment. Definitely want quite a lot of this dark blue. I don't know, it might be too dark, but we'll see. Mm, this is a pretty one. I don't want it too perfect on the other hand, so let's mess it up now a bit. This one, I know it looks very, very green. Which color do I want to see more? I'm not sure why, but every time I do something like this, I feel like I'm in the kitchen making something as if, because I really don't. <laughs> I don't bake amazing stuff and you know, so it's kind of funny. Maybe it's my replacement therapy. <laughs> the flower, I used it once and then I needed something stronger. It's very nice, but some of you will miss my old crazy friend and to be honest, I still have it, just in case I need something much stronger. Let's move it at the beginning. Always helps to spread the colors. Do you know how much area is actually already covered? I like stopping and seeing what went wrong and which part I like. You know, it looks like I'm doing the Dutch pour, but that's not what I wanted. And I definitely don't want flower effects. No, because this is the sea. Yes, I do like certain elements. These look like seaweeds too, actually. Let me just finish this off. There's quite a lot of paint. I didn't expect it would be so much. I think I'm happy. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to check which edges are not covered, like here. And with the same color, because I really like the same colors going down. See how nicely it covers. And of course, I am collecting every single drip for my new color for later. I think we've got some nice depth, ocean depth with some uh, vegetation somewhere, some seaweeds here. 
And yes, everything is going to be darker. So yeah, we'll see. Do you want to see me cleaning? This part is for the fish. That's what I was planning. So now, time to think how to do the fish. How big do I want the fish and how many? That's the question. So a quick sketch of a fish. Um, kind of wondering whether to make a, a koi fish. Maybe, maybe more pointy. Just one little fin like that. So we've got three. That's super quick. I'm going to produce, well, at least three times more probably. And then we'll wonder which ones I want to have 3D. I've got quite a few, but I think I'm going to cut them out so that I'll be able to position them and see how I like them. Uh, I think this one is too big. It looks like a shark going to eat my fish. I wonder if they should be overlapping some of them. But I am planning something else that I haven't done before. Looking at this background, I do know that I want to introduce something different around the edges. And I thought, what if we try one of those fancy lines that are so popular? It's just say like cloudy formations of lines and they are usually golden. That should not be too difficult. So let me just try it out. You basically divide it into sections and I proceed with those kind of lines. So I am imagining I'm going to catch the fish. So these are the nets. But the question is, how do I do them and what do I use? 10 minutes later, we've got this. I'm going to transfer only the main lines. And I made it in such a way that I want it somewhere here. I taped it directly onto the table. It, it doesn't matter. And now, As I missed that section, I drew it freehand. The lines are pretty visible, especially if I look at the angle, I can see where to go. Now, big question. First I was thinking glue gun, and yes, I could do all those thicker lines, but then I'll have to do the thin lines with something else because I don't think that's possible with the glue gun. I could use the acrylic pens. That would be probably the simplest, quickest and the most efficient. I've got the whole selection. I wonder if you think the same because very often when I purchase a golden pen, I then don't like the color of the gold. Decisions. All right. I am going to use this one and I'm going to do the big lines. How about that? Okay. Uh, I am so anxious now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mm. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. Okay. Yeah, let's let's just I can do it. I can do it. Oh my goodness, I did it. Okay, now I can calm down. I can do it. I definitely can. It's only because it's so thick. I would also like to give a shout out and a massive thank you to my wonderful patrons. Thanks to their support, I can continue creating all that free content for you. Recently, all the extended versions of my tutorials that I post there had over 100% extra footage. So if you would like to get access to double length versions of my weekly tutorials, you can join too from just $2 a month and help support the channel. So I'll finish and I won't stress you anymore. I'm just going to come back in three minutes once I go over the lines. A useful tip, be fast. The quicker you do it, the better it looks. And I might adapt some of the lines. I think I want this one coming from here. See, I am pretty quick now. Yeah, I shouldn't have stressed about it at all. I think it's going to look good. Very different, very different. Never tried these lines before, but you know what? They are very effective and they are super easy, so why not? By line number 15, I am so confident I am actually completely improvising. Da. And it's looking good. I don't want the lines in between as thick as these, so what should we do? I have an idea. 
You know, there's some paint in here. What if I paint with that paint? Okay, we've got that. Ah, this is going to be fun. Okay, this is my little brush. Let me start with a smaller section so I know it's doable. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm a genius. Sorry. <laughs> come on, little brush. I think my little brush needs fixing. Let's fix it and come back to it. But it's working. That's maybe not the most efficient way to paint, but it does work and I'm liking it. I'm doing another section. Now this brush can get every tiny space. I think that was the best option. You know, this is completely addictive. I can understand why some people like it so much. I'm not looking at any designs, I'm just, I'm completely freehand drawing whatever I want. As I said, this is my very, very, very first time trying those lines. I'm really liking them. There's something to be said about a brush. It doesn't look mechanical, you know? This is probably the most therapeutic painting I've done for a long time. Completely don't care about the design. You do your own lines and they look good. How amazing is that? I'm going to try to make the fish. I haven't used a drying clay for a long time. I wonder if it's still... Oh yeah, that should work. I'll try one and we'll see. All right, let's try any of them. Oh, come on. It moved, but it doesn't matter. I'm only touching it gently. And we've got the imprint. Now, I know they are, they are rather small. That's why I was thinking that Fimo would be much, much easier. I wanted them a bit chunkier than with Fimo. Personally, I love working with real clay. I've never showed anything on this channel because majority of you are interested in pouring, but I love 3D work. At the moment, I am working on a clay project with my youngest group at school. I'm liking it. Yes, I'm going to produce more. I quite like it. And once I cut them all, I'll press down the edges so we've got a nice shape. I do like taking some sections out without disturbing my main object. Which fish do you think it is? If you're a fish specialist, could you please tell me which type of fish this is? Making some really small ones now. I forgot and I was making and making more and more and more and then I thought, uh, that's probably too many, but it's fine. It's better to have too many because I can throw away the ones that won't be perfect or maybe they'll break. I've been repositioning my fish. I better take a picture now so I don't forget how I want them. Two of them almost got caught in the net. Now time for gold leaf. I only notice how the net shines so beautifully now. It's close to the light source. I am putting them here. It's going to be much easier applying the paste when they on something non-porous. This is this is baking paper. That's the stuff I seem to be using for everything but baking. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be very easy on this. Uh, oh, by the way, I sprayed them. I sprayed them with varnish. They are not shiny. I suppose the varnish just got inside. I wanted them to be kind of waterproof, if it's possible. Gilding paste needs to be applied before the leaf. After painting with the paste, I'll wait roughly 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to be generous here. All sides, glad I don't have to hold them with my fingers. Edges, I'm moving them. 
some clean space. I will be dealing with my fish one by one. It's not the easiest. Why didn't I want to do it on the painting? Because it probably will be easier just brushing off like this. I wanted to make sure that I am not putting the paste anywhere because the fish is not really flat. That's why I didn't want uh, some of the paste to drip onto the painting. That was my only reason. And also it's very easy doing one by one like this. So two ready. Uh, how many to go? 14 probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, no, yes, 14. All shiny and beautiful. Time to position my little sprats back where they belong. Now, which one was where? I think I want them the same way. It will take me a couple of minutes. You know what? I was When I was making them, I thought I had so many. And now I'm thinking <laughs> maybe I should have made more. Maybe. I was trying to imitate the movement, so that's why they are nicely bent, most of them. There's only one that looks straightish, and that goes in the net as a punishment. There you go. I think they are in a very similar position, and I'm happy with the arrangement. Time to glue them down. I'm going to use diamond glaze, and I'm going to do one by one. Of course, I was looking for something small, any piece of rubbish to put it in a place where I want the fish to be so I don't have to go back to the picture again and now I'm going to apply some glue I don't know why I create such a mess every time I'm working I wonder how many of you can relate to that pretty bad now hold it down for a few seconds There we are. I hope you enjoyed these swimming beauties as much as I did creating them. If you have hung around to the end of the video, please let me know which fish is your favorite and what you would name it in the comments. If you would like to see more, consider joining my Patreon, where there's a lot of extra content for you to enjoy and it helps support the channel so much. If you really like this particular piece, you can actually own the original by heading over to abcreativeofficial.com. Christmas is coming soon, so if you order something now, it will arrive in perfect time. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all at the premiere of my new video next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.